Another kind of exponential function, no, okay. What if you don't put an integer as your base? What if you use a fraction? Well, you can see that here we have one half to the x, one third to the x, one fourth to the x, etc., etc. And interestingly enough, these also are exponential functions, but they're flipped across the y-axis. So they all go through the point uh, 0, 1. They all have a horizontal asymptote at, I forget to enter it, y equals 0. But they're flipped across the x-axis. That's very interesting. In fact, if we take a look over here, here we have y equals 2 to the x and y equals 1 half to the x, and these guys are exact mirror images of each other. Interesting. So what's going on with that? Because I thought, looking back, I thought that if I wanted to flip across the y-axis, I would make this number negative. Well, let's, let's see what happens when we do that. So if I start with y equals 2 to the x, and I want to get, I want this to be negative, so it flips across the axis. So I'm going to write y equals 2 to the negative x. What that is, is y equals 2 to the negative 1 times x. And I can uh, go ahead and do 2 to the negative 1. So y equals 2 to the negative 1 to the x. And 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. So when you see a fraction in here, that's exactly the same as an, an integer, assuming it's a simple fraction with 1 on top, an integer to a negative exponent. All right, that's how those are related, which is why 2 to the x and x to the 1, or I'm sorry, 2 to the x and y equals 1 half to the x are mirror images because 1 half to the x is equivalent to 2 to the negative x. I'm not happy with what I just did. Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> so what happens if you put a fraction inside? No. So what happens if you put... So what happens if you suddenly lose the ability to speak entirely? <laughs> so what happens if you make a fraction your base? Here are some examples. We have y equals one-half to the x, y equals one-third to the x, one-fourth, one-fifth, yada yada. Okay, so, well here we see that instead of exponential growth, here we have exponential decay. You start out with a whole lot of something, and when you have a whole lot, the slope is very steep, in this case steeply negative, so it shrinks very quickly. And then as there's less and less of your whatever, it shrinks more and more slowly until it's basically a horizontal line. These, again, just like exponential growth functions, have a, uh, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. They also go through the point 0, 1, and they look exactly the same as exponential functions with a, an integer as our base, except they're flipped across the y-axis. So for example, let's just look at y equals 2 to the x, which is this exponential growth function, and y equals 1 half to the x, which is this exponential decay function. You'll see that they both pass through this point, 0, 1. They both have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, and in fact, they're mirror images of each other. Interesting. But remember, if a function is flipped across the y-axis, that means that this constant must be negative, right? So let's see how that works. Let's take a look at y equals 
2 to the x. If we wanted to flip that across the y-axis, what we would do is we would say that's y equals 2 to the negative x. So I'm just going to apply some algebra foo to this and see what I can come up with. y equals 2. Okay, instead of writing negative x, I'm going to write negative 1 times x. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go backwards on that whole power of a power thing, which means that y equals 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2. And we have y equals 1 half to the x. So that's why 2 to the x and y equals 1 half to the x are mirror images across the y, y axis is because uh, 1 half is 2 to the negative 1.